Giles Online. Hello, this is St. Giles Online, our weekly virtual gathering to learn from the greatest gift we have, the Word of God. Grab a cuppa and a chocolate hobnob and enjoy the service. The Lord be with you. Good morning and a very warm welcome to St. Giles. I'm Lee, I'm the vicar here and thanks for joining us this morning. We're going to get straight into it today. Will and Lisa are going to lead us in worship.
we're going to do a, a new song now. One of Lisa's favourites. Quite quick. Um, it's about sort of like giving your all uh, when you worship as well. So giving your all to God. It says, um, I will be undignified. to Peter Watkins who's prepared our sermon for today. We're thinking about the feeding of the 5,000. We're going to watch a dramatised version of our reading. It's from Matthew chapter 14 and then Peter's going to share God's word with us. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. 
They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Good morning, and it's good to be with you again. Wendy and I have three sons, and when they were growing up, it sometimes felt that we needed a conveyor belt from the supermarket straight to the dining room table. And when their friends came, it was even worse. We used to say, it's like feeding the 5,000. Today's reading is from Matthew 14, and it's the only miracle that appears in all four Gospels. It's in Matthew 14, John 6, Mark 6 and Luke 9. We're familiar with the story. Jesus uses a boy's packed lunch of two lo uh, five loaves and two fishes to feed a crowd of 5,000 men plus women and children. Jesus wanted to be alone. He wanted some time for himself. He wanted to recoup and pray and rest and think. And so he goes across the lake to a secluded spot. But we're told that the crowd followed him. A huge crowd. I wonder if Jesus felt, oh no, I could do without this. But what does the Bible say? It says that he welcomed them and spoke about the kingdom of God to them, and healed those who needed healing. As the day wore on, the disciples became a little concerned that uh, the physical needs of the crowd weren't being met. The day was coming to an end, they were far from home, and they were getting hungry. So they went to Jesus with the only practical solution they could think of, and said to Jesus, look, Jesus, you're going to have to send these people home. They're hungry now. Or at least send them to the surrounding villages where they can buy some food and get some shelter for the night. That was their solution. But Jesus had a better idea. No, he said, you give them something to eat. What? It seemed that they'd forgotten all the miracles they'd seen Jesus perform a short time before. Maybe some of them did remember. But Andrew asked, we've only got this boy's picnic of five loaves and two small fish. This is my lunch, by the way. Pita bread, tuna and mayonnaise. Very nice but it wouldn't feed 5,000 people. Philip, on the other hand, exclaims, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for everyone just to have a bite. So what did Jesus do? We're told that he gave thanks. He broke the bread and then gave it to the disciples to distribute to the crowd. And John tells us that they had as much as they wanted. So much so that there are 12 baskets full left over. They ate and they were satisfied. Jesus gave them a feast. Sometimes our expectations are too small and think we're helpless in the face of overwhelming situations. But God can shatter our meagre expectations when we learn to bring to him what little we've already been given. Little is much when God is in it. And when Christians are willing to offer their life sacrificially, letting go of what God has given them in terms of time, money, talents, and saying, you gave them to me, God, they're yours to use. They're not mine to keep. They're for your glory, not for mine. God delights in taking the seemingly insignificant person and using them to his glory. Now Philip's mind immediately went to the cost of the project and how long it would take in terms of man hours. 
a very practical man. Oh, the church is good at being practical, isn't it? Putting the cost first, rather than asking, what does God want us to do? The last question we should be asking is, can we afford it? Because it's from God and it's what God wants, then he will provide. He will use us to provide it. The disciples saw an impossible task because they approached it as if everything depended on their own work. Jesus' approach was different. He did the seemingly impossible, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Jesus didn't just snap his fingers and everyone had a plate of food in front of them. He fed the crowd through the agency of the disciples. They had to trust the Lord that there would be enough to go round. God uses people like that. Those who devote vast amounts of time, effort and money volunteering it perhaps in a food bank, to feed people, in citizen advice bureaus, volunteering in hospitals and hospices and many more situations. We can say God can do the impossible. It's easy for us to say, with God, nothing is impossible. The problem comes when we're faced with putting that theory into practice. And we do gout God. We tend to rely on our own resources, then fully reliant on God. Frog, as the wristbands used to say. In, as Christians, we need to bring our lives to God in a spirit of obedience and sacrifice, no matter how insignificant we think they are. When we do that, we can expect God to do far beyond what can be imagined. Not only do we need to trust God, him, trust God for our needs, but also trust that he will use us for the needs of others and for the glory and extension of his kingdom. There are countless illustrations of Christians offering the little they have and God using them in amazing ways. But there are far more stories that are not told or written down of ordinary people giving what they have to God and him doing extraordinary things. A few years ago, I was in Nigeria and I met this lady. She was really, really happy. She had nothing. She lived in a mud hut with her family. She had no money and very little to eat. But she had a problem. And the problem was that they had built a church in the village and they made it out of sticks. But every year the termites came and ate the church. Don't think we've got that problem at St Giles yet. So she said, what can I do? And she devoted all her spare time to cutting grass, getting mud and making bricks. She wanted to build a church and it had taken her a long time. As you can see there, she managed to do it gradually, bit by bit. No praise, no glory, no congratulations from anyone, just quietly getting on with what God had asked her to do, using what she could. What are your loaves and fishes? How can God multiply them? How can he use you today? Remember, he can do immeasurably more than you can imagine. Amen.
Morning everyone, it's time for the interview bit of the vidcast and as with every week we speak to some lovely people um, that you will recognise from St Giles and we've got a couple on this week and that couple is Sam and Kirsty Thomas. Hello, how are you? Hello. Hi. Um, good, thank you. <laughs> no, how are you? It's nice, this is going to be nice. <laughs> Don't be scared, I've only got nice questions. <laughs> my, first, my first one being, how are you? <laughs> good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Excellent. End of interview. <laughs> <laughs> how have things been over the last couple of months obviously we haven't seen well no one's seen anybody because of lockdown so how have things been for the thomas family um fairly normal actually in the sense of i'm a stay-at-home mum so i'm not juggling a career and homeschooling so i can focus on homeschooling i've had both girls with me 24 7 which has been Fun and challenging. Exciting <laughs> is the word. Um, <laughs> it sounds like it's exciting. I feel you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, I've still been going. I wasn't furloughed, so I was working from home for a few weeks. So I could escape two floors up, made a little office in our spare room. It's great. And what Every is often, the child would come up. Uh, so um, I work for KRCS, we're Apple uh, Computers reseller um i do customer services a lot of the online sales back-end stuff as well um <clears throat> so i came home with a box full of kit and sat upstairs and made a little office it was lovely ironically for you did it get busier because presumably at the beginning of lockdown yeah. people suddenly went oh i need a computer yeah the first sort of week or two were lots of people going i need a macbook we need four macbooks for our <laughs> staff we need six <laughs> uh, so yeah we got really busy um and generally speaking, obviously, the, because the shops were shut, the online store sales just went up. Yeah. Um, and we sold Amazon as well, so a lot of that went up as well. So, yeah, we got stupid busy. So really and also, lots of people were furloughed, apart from about seven of us. So I had more work to do anyway. <laughs> so I got really busy. <laughs> a few floors up. Um, and have... So you've got two um, girls, Emma, who is school age. Has she been back at school or have you had her home the whole time? No, so she's year two, so she's been too old to return. Um, but then Grace is preschool, so she went back three weeks ago, four weeks ago, um, and she's just done two, two hours every afternoon. So it's just kind of given me that time to really focus on something a bit more heavy going with Emma. Yeah, it's been good. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, as we head into school holidays, uh, we were just saying before we started recording, it, it, it's that mixture of shall we go out? Can we have a day trip? Um, and doing those things. So whereas um, I think a lot of people are going, oh, it's, it's school holidays, so at least we don't have to do homeschooling. It's now working out the new normal of of what we can do in the school summer holidays. It's a long time to fill. I'm a little bit terrified. I'll be mm. honest. Um, Sam's due to be at work for the entire time. <laughs> um, hopefully have a couple of odd days off here and there. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think I've had both girls 24 seven for what, 18 weeks. Yeah. And we thought of another six weeks <laughs> with no structure or routine is yeah. a little bit daunting. It's, it's hard. No, I, I, I know for a fact, because I've spoken to yeah. a few of them, <laughs> I've been exactly the same going oh it's really hard having the kids all the time I mean clearly we all love our children but it's that yeah. it's the having them all the time and not being able to go to Eden soft play or you know all the difficult all the things that we normally take for granted and in terms of your faith do you think it's helped you through this time or is it is it something that that's been difficult uh definitely helped I think as horrendous as the pandemic has been it's definitely made me realise how important faith is to actually the four of us. Mm. It's been really fascinating to see how the girl's faith at just seven years and three years old, it's amazing to see what they've been doing. They've been wanting to brainstorm who to pray for. Um, they've become fascinated with their prayer book. So reading prayers every evening on the dot and actually mentioning COVID in prayers. Um, and then we play an awful lot of worship music during the day. Um, <laughs> it's kind of our go-to, if I feel anxious, it calms me down. Um, the girls sing and dance all the time. Sam obviously plays guitar in the worship band. 
yeah, I've been doing that a lot more in the evenings, get my guitar out for more than I have been. So again, I think it's a it helps relax after the day, and um, yeah, that sort of our connection to God really is through music. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that have had a lot of worship music on. Yeah. Over the years. <laughs> it is something that just grounds you. And you you hear the words, and you go, okay, I think I can, I think I can get through this afternoon, or I can yeah. get through this morning. It's just like a breathing I don't know it brings a sense of peace for me especially if the girls are in bed mm -hmm. and I just need that kind of downtime in the evening yeah um yeah it's a really lovely way of worshipping without the rest of church around I suppose I know, well but, soon at some point it yeah. will get back to normal at, um, no one knows when but it will get back to normal at some point and we can't wait to to see you and the girls thank you so much for talking to us Kirsty and Sam Thomas thank you you're welcome no problem <laughs> It was lovely to see Kirsty and Sam there, and I'm so grateful for all that they do leading our Sunbeams programme. And normally they'll be part of our junior church, but this morning, and we don't have any junior church online, we're having a bit of a break, and I'm sure many of our usual junior church families are joining us online. So a special shout out to you guys. Um, hi, everybody, and look, looking forward to when we can all get back together again online. Um, don't forget as well, there's no Wednesday communion this week. Uh, we're having a little bit of break for holiday season. And if you're on holiday, please do keep um, tweeting those pictures. Remember the little cutout cross or with the heart shape, whatever it is uh, that you're using. And uh, copy us in, tag us in at St Giles Parish. And also um, use the hashtag St Giles Online. And then we can look at each other up and see what each other's doing. That'd be great to see uh, some of those pictures. Right, in a moment, Will and Lisa are going to lead us in our final song. But before they do, we're going to close with a blessing. So the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We go in peace to love and praise the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
though you are worthy. You are worthy of all our praise. And we lift your name up so high above everything else. We pray that we'll lift your name, name high this week, Lord. You'd be with us this week and that we can glorify you. And 